Well, it's a bit of a relic. Um, Motorola Flexar UHF base station repeater. Um, that's your radio, your handset right there. There's the frequency and the tone on top. There's the receiver at the bottom with the duplexer. Transmitter is in top. There's the back. There's an old General Electric charger. Um, there's some more junk back here. Is this stuff? And uh, hold on, can't see it, but yep, Motorola Flexar. I don't know the origin of this radio, but I do know how much was paid for it. And personally, what the guy paid for it was too much. Um, there's the back of it. Oh, well, flex our receiver data RC0177, model number L44TRK6102AH. And there's the transmitter, uh, FCC, FCC transmitter data, data CC4263C, model number L44. TRK six one zero two eight H same as bottom. Well, back here we got we're gonna we got your uh, transmitter radio. Here's the uh, control cabling, the transmitter or output. This is the actual radio's PA. It's a twenty five watt PA. And we got over here we got us some M ninety six thirty nine power transistors, a fuse, AC mains cord. Down here is your radio's output, or the duplexer. We have a metering plug, a control plug, and an input plug from the transmitter. Information. Uh, this radio, the previous owner has not put any feet on it and has used self-tapping tech screws to hold the bottom plate on, which I will not be taking apart because it is a pain in the ass to do. Turn this thing down. You can see my messy desk as I'm scratching the uh, the fake wood. And we're back to the front. Now this thing is not plugged in. It does work. I just got finished servicing it, and I'll go over the problems and what I did to fix them, alleviate them in a minute. The first and major problem that this radio had when the guy brought it to me after he bought it was it would not turn on. Well, it turns out that the power uh, leaf in there behind the switch, the click turns on, was absolutely dirty. It had that tin uh, uh, damn uh, patina on it, and I had to squirt it out with contact cleaner and work it. And that got a turn on. That also cleaned up any scratches in it. Did the same with the squilch. All this was sprayed everything works the only problem now is the front bezel will not stay down right here um, this one has its handset you have a push to talk button right here you can use it as a telephone talking it like a phone you know the old school telephones if any of you are old enough to remember when phones had cords it hooked to a base unit and you either had numbers on here or on the base. This one has a PTT button. When you place this thing back in its cradle, there's a magnet switch that turns the front firing speaker back on. And this allows you to use this radio in a private manner where people, like say in a prison or a security office or whatever, to use this thing and talk on it like a phone and not have any audio as long as this was off because it's coming through this speaker. Put it back on there. You can hear it through here. Um, I'll take this off and uh, show you something else that is interesting about this radio. Flip it on its side right quick. Is that down here is a set of terminals. Now this is upside down of course. Turn it around or upside down rather. And on these terminals we have mic high, mic low, PTT, monitor ground, PG, blank, I'm assuming ground, and phone line negative and positive, high and low, in and out, you know, phone line. 
out here. And what this is for is for a remote console station. Let's say you uh, you can have this at a tower uh, in another room or closer to the radio transmitting tower and you know like uh, in another office and you can have a remote station out on a front desk or wherever and you can run it through category 5 1 2 3 4 6 yeah you can use cat 5 connect all these and have two more to connect a phone line now this particular radio does not have a telephone patch interconnect in it it only has a I believe it's a DC remote control in it um, hurting myself this thing does have some weight on it it is older than I am I th no it's not older than I am it's almost as old as I am though um it's in really nice shape um this is on a gmrs frequency with a digital tone of 412 it is a repeater it has a plus five in here and this radio is unique in the fact that the transmitter section is crystal controlled now this radio's problem is the transmitter drifts after it's keyed up for a little while it starts drifting off frequency and the problem with that is I nailed down the problem as being a bad oscillator capacitor which I have replaced and retuned and I peaked this radio uh, now and it is stable on its frequency at 25 watts before the duplexer and about 22 watts out of the duplexer the receiver opens up at less than two tenths of a microvolt and that is through the duplexer I mean, wait a minute, no, that's, yeah, that's through the duplexer, and even less than that, you know, direct to the receiver. Now, the uniqueness of this radio is that the transmitter has a crystal oscillator in it on 462.625. <coughs> through the magic of control cables and integrated circuits of the 80s, the receiver is synthesized plus five it's a programmable board in the receiver with dip uh, not dip but uh, a header with jumpers programming shunts that programs the offset with the magic of integrated circuitry and technology of the 80s <laughs> a crystal is not needed in the receiver it synthesizes plus five megahertz off of the transmitter for repeater operation and when you hit repeater off it changes synthesized to direct 625 on the receiver so that was kind of unique I thought um, also what I have with this particular radio is the official Motorola service manual flex our base station and this manual this instruction manual service manual shows you, tells you how about how how to tune it what everything is what all the options are such as you have all your station data. You got if you have VHF, a UHF, and yes, the old relics of the past, the 800s, and station equipment accessories. Now, station data basically is an instruction manual. It tells you how to operate the radio, what all the features are. VHF alignment procedures, UHF alignment procedures, yada yada. Same with 800 megahertz. We can give you a soldering technique. Tell you all about it. Station equipment. It tells you different schematics, diagrams, parts list, control boards, um, local remote control boards, DC remote control board. Uh, what is this one? Audio leveler board. Um, got a three watt audio board for loud and stuff. Tone PL, just straight PL encoder. And another really cool thing on this one is, is that it has a digital private line, a DPL, high pass filter, a digital clock module for it, power supply. It also has the digital uh, control board, which is in this particular area, is digital. The digital tones are set by a jumper pack, a ceramic, little tiny ceramic circuit board. 
that has preset jumpers in it but if you're adventurous you could pull that out and find the common pin and make jumpers in the socket and get your own digital tone also the digital tone is in the receiver is synthesized back up to the transmitter interestingly enough so it's like a two-way synthesization between the two it's it's really neat um, and this board here is a desktop microphone it's handset there's the back cover it fell off okay but that guys is the Motorola Flex R this radio has been repaired has been tuned and is ready to go back home to the GMRS uh, operator who owns it and that will be delivered tomorrow along with two other mobiles that he sent in for programming and with that guys i am elf with elfnet designs communications and gaming and i will see you in the next video